In this uh, video, we're going to be going over the automation folders and how to create them and how to deploy them and then what they look like when they're used. The automation folders for Ghost Solution Suite are a set of Windows PE files that are on the client machine ready to be used so that when a job that requires booting to automation or Windows PE is right there and able to be, be booted to rather than having to deliver it across the network. Uh, it's much quicker this way and uh, saves a lot of time. A couple of things, a client machine can't be dual boot and a lot of people will be uh, thinking, okay, well, I, meaning not like Windows and Linux, but if you have a brand new uh, factory machine and you haven't installed a clean operating system on it yet, it probably has a tools partition and maybe a recovery partition they can all be booted from and even though it's only one Windows OS on that machine that tools partition or that recovery partition are additional boot partitions and then the automation folders will not be able to be used on that machine so pixie booting those machines will be fine but because they do have multiple OS's even if a person were not thinking of those tools and utilities as full OS's they are a separate OS and so automation folders can only be set up on single OS systems. So we can get in here to the boot disk creator and we will make a new configuration. We will call this one a simple simple PE and we're gonna go with 10 because that's what's on here. You can put a description in if you like and if you don't have yet your PE files installed you can install them from here. I've already installed the x86 and the 64 Windows PE 10. So if you need to, you can add others. See the other videos for that. Okay, we are not gonna be adding of drivers, but if we needed to, we could add drivers uh, from here. So we'll cover that in another video. Do need to be probably DHCP for our client machines. If we're going to use a static IP, we'd have to put it in here, and we'd have to make a separate package for each static IP system. So if we wanted to have 10 uh, static IP address settings, we'd have to have 10 different packages here. So DHCP would be the better for, for this, even if the machines are running in production from a static IP address. If you can have a DHCP pool for re-imaging purposes, that would be excellent. The IP address of the Ghost Solution Suite server and the port number. This is going to be the user who has rights to mapping of drives. And so by default, we map the M drive to the Ghost server to the Express Share, and that is excellent. But there are times when we will want to have a separate uh, image drive, and if we wanted that, we could then select a second drive, and we could then put the path to the server. So in my particular case, I happen to have a, uh, let's do this differently. Let's go for my I drive and then I will be for images. Next. If that map drive was on a different server, if we were to use the IP address, that would be beneficial so that we don't have to make a second LM host entry for that machine. By default, we'll have one LM host entry for the Ghost Solution Suite server. So these are all the packages or components that are available via the PE package that we've installed. And so since we have the WinPE 10, um, these are all the ones that are available there. One that I would recommend including is the Enhanced Storage Package. It's not a default, but your tablet PCs and some of your SSE or SSD drive systems are uh, performances improved or the ability to see those drives is uh, better off when we include the enhanced storage package. You could lock a keyboard if you didn't want your end users to be able to use the keyboard or mess with things while we're in PE. Here's the summary of what's going to be happening. You can see I have my two uh, mapped drives. Uh, here we are, we've got our simple PE10 here. And I'll show you real quick where we can put in additional LM host entries if needed. So because my server is 
my both my shares are on the same server or I don't need to add an additional one. If I did, we could certainly put it here, the IP address and then the system name. So we don't need to do that. I am going to go ahead and create a automation folder installer so that I could show you how to install automation folders if you're going to script it with another tool or if you were going to copy the files uh, to a thumb drive and take them from machine to machine potentially. Um, anyway, most of my machines are 64-bit, so my installer will also be 64-bit. And my PE package that I'd like to build is 64-bit. We will stick with the default location, but I'll copy it so it's easier to get to. And we are going to have it run silent install um, without input. I'm going to keep that the way it is. But you could certainly build one and have it be so that you could see what's happening for the first couple of goes. Because it's in a folder that is the default, but it doesn't exist, ask if we want to make it now. And we do. All right, now that our package is completed here, go ahead and close. Do pay attention to where the path was if, uh, if you didn't yet, because we will need that to get to the files if we're going to install it manually. There we go. And here is my simple PE package. So, cool feature that on 3.3 GA, so the initial release of 3.3 is broken, is these dynamic machine groups. When MP1 comes out, this should be resolved, hopefully by the time you watch this video. When you come in here, this will be any machine that their inventory, when we go to properties, says automation uh, folders, no. So automatically, if we're trying to do a list of, well, I wonder which machines have or which ones don't, we would be able to come here and get a list of all the machines that don't have it yet, and we can actually uh, install them right from here. So maybe we'll start that because it takes a while. So we'll take our O2 machine here, and we will go to advanced and install automation folder. And then we will pick from our list of automation folders. We only have one. And we will give it a set of credentials here. Basically, whom has rights to copy files to that machine and who has rights to execute those files once they're there. So let's do a quick RDP into this one. All right, so this is the O1 machine that we are not pushing it the automation folder too. We're going to go ahead and install the automation folder manually. So because those files were on the server, we can go ahead and go to and we should be able to then get to the express share that is on here and drill down through the folder path here in Bootworks packages. And here's our simple PE. We can go and run as administrator. Our installer we chose to be silent, but unfortunately the definition of silent here is no user interaction. So it is not requiring a user interaction, but it's not silent by what I would generally think of silent. So go to properties here, and we can see now that automation folder is installed. And on the one that we pushed it to, we can see that it's finished and the status is also finished. And we can see that our automation folder is now installed. So excellent. So what we will do is take this wait job. And what this wait job is about uh, is going to, well, it's just going to boot to automation and wait for user action. So because we have the automation folder in place, we should be able to then execute
just keep this over here. We won't do be able to do it via RDP. We can see that our job is already restarting. Our machine's already restarting. And over here, I've got a console session to the machine, so we can watch it. We'll have to modify the boot order because I'll just hit escape here because I do have Pixie set up and I don't want it to Pixie boot. I want it instead. There we go. So we hit escape and we quickly are now loading files because these are directly from the machine and our boot time is going to be fairly quick because there's no transferring. It's already there. And here we are in our automation environment. Going to map the drives and then it'll just uh, stop at a waiting state and we can then from the command window take care of uh, checking uh, connectivity whatever other troubleshooting we would want to do this guy here it will check with the server soon because we have our LM host we know what the IP address is we can see that we're talking to the server go to the M drive I'm already in M drive and I can see the files that are in there here we go we've got our agents and our BK packages bootworks packages so we can see that we are talking to the server and we'll go over here and we can also see that our wait task is completed successfully and our icon now is different in that we are in pre OS and that's what this triangle is about is that we are sitting ready uh, well not just ready but the, the status of the machine is in pre OS whereas this one is not in the pre OS it's in the full OS and this one with a user face on it uh, all those Linux it looks a little different but if we had a user face on one of these then it means someone's logged in so thank you very much for how uh, watching this video on how to deploy and create automation folders both via the push deploy the right click and uh, right click and advanced and then install automation folder and then also from double clicking it from the client side thank you very much